All right, so our third proof, we're actually going to work in a little bit different direction than we've been going. We've been actually working off of the assumption that the lines are parallel, and now we're going to prove the lines are parallel. So let's start off with our statements and reasons. So we've got our statements and reasons. So given that the measure of angle 8 is 75 degrees and the measure of angle 6 is 105 degrees, prove that the lines are parallel. So here's what we're going to do first. What always comes first is the given. So I'm given that the measure of angle 8 equals 75 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and label that on my picture. And I'm also given that the measure of angle 6 equals 105. Make sure you put to your degree symbols. I'm going to label that on my picture. Some people, and that's because of given, that's the reason is given. Some people choose to put givens in different places. I prefer that actually sometimes. But for our purposes, to kind of cut down on the number of steps that you have to take for our class, we're just going to put all the givens together unless it really does cause confusion. So I'm going to put all the givens together first. All right, so now let's look at the types of angles that we have. So I'm looking at, I'm trying to prove A and B are parallel. Now in order to do that, I have to prove that one of our special angle pairs, whether it be alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, or corresponding, are congruent. Or I have to prove that same side interior or same side exterior are supplementary, adding to 180. Well, if you look at the picture here, the really the only special type of angle pair created by a transversal that I have, besides the linear pair here, is the corresponding angles. So my only option is really going to be to prove that the corresponding angles are the same. If I can show and demonstrate that the corresponding angles are the same and they're congruent, that would be enough for me to conclude that A is parallel to B. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we can tie 8 to 5 together, and then we can tie uh, we can tie 8 to 5 together, and then we'll tie 5 to 6. So let's do 8 and 5 first. Okay, what do you know about 8 and 5? 8 and 5 form a linear pair. So again, I'm going to skip all the extra steps in there. I'm not going to make you say they're a linear pair, and then put another step and say, they're supplementary, and then put another step and write the equation. We're just going to jump right to the equation, okay? So the measure of angle 8 plus the measure of angle 5 is going to equal 180 degrees, and that's by, we're going to start calling that the linear pair postulate. That states that linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, so I know that that's the linear pair postulate. All right, so I know that 8 and 5 add up to 180. Okay, now on the one we did the other day, I actually I actually wrote a number in there, and I, I kind of cut down a number of steps, that, the, to cut down the number of steps that you have, but I'm going to actually show you with the substitution in. What do I know about angle 8? Don't I know angle 8 is already 75 degrees? So... 75 degrees can be substituted in for angle 8, so 75 degrees plus the measure of angle 5 is equal to 180, and that's by substitution. Remember substitution rule, if you substitute one equal value in for another. So that's substitution. So I've taken the 75 degrees and substituted it in for the 8. In, the, in, the, in class the other day, I went ahead and wrote the 75 in there, but I want you to actually use the substitution to get some practice with it. Okay, so now let's move on to the next step. Step 4. Okay, I know that I'm trying to establish that 5 and 6 are the same, correct? So I've created a situation here where I can solve for 5. How do I get the measure of angle 5 all by itself? I'm going to use the subtraction property because I'm going to subtract from both sides, just like algebra. I'm going to subtract 75, subtract 75. And I'm going to be left with, and we'll put the number 4 down here, the measure of angle 5 equals 105 degrees. And that's by the subtraction property. 
I subtracted the same value from each side. That's one of our algebra properties that we talked about at the very beginning. Okay. All right. So now, okay, so now I'm in a situation where I can make another statement here. And my next statement is going to be, I know that the measure of angle 8 is 75. I'm sorry. I know that the measure of angle 6 is 105 and the measure of angle 5 is 105. So then, therefore, by transitive property, if 6 is equal to 105 and 105 is equal to measure of angle 5, I can say that the measure of angle 6 is equal to the measure of angle 5 by the transitive property. That's the transitive property, okay? Again, I know that those two are equal because it already says, we've established from the given that 6 is 105, and now we've established that 5 is 105, so they're equal. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, now when you know two values are equal, we know that angle 6, that means angle 6 is congruent to angle 5, and that's just the definition of congruence. Again, there's any number of ways to do this. It depends on who you talk to, who's teaching it. They're going to give you a bunch of different ways. Okay, so after all that, what we've done again is we've used the given. We established up here that 8 and 5 were a linear pair. Once we established that 8 and 5 were a linear pair, we established down here by subtraction that 5 is also equal to 105 which then tied angle 6 and angle 5 together because now they're equal. And if they're equal measure, it means they're congruent. So now we're ready to finish our proof. We have just proven that the two corresponding angles are congruent to each other, this one and this one. So knowing that those two are congruent, I can actually say that A, I know now that A is parallel to B. Why do I know that? The converse of the corresponding angle postulate. Why is it the converse? Well, remember, the, co the corresponding angle postulate says if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. But that's not what we have here. We're working the other way. We proved if the angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. That's the converse. Remember, we talked about that with conditional statements. You switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So this is the proof that shows that A and B are parallel. You establish that the linear pair, which enables, enables you to find the measure of angle 5, which connects you to the ang measure of angle 6, which establishes that the corresponding angles are congruent, which then is a enables us to say the converse of the corresponding angle postulate makes the lines parallel.